Welcome to Cisco Lisp Configuration Guide, here is Lab 1, which is a basic config with explanation about fundamentals of Lisp. If you need to know the core elements of Lisp, or you don't know what is MR or MS in the Lisp topology, I highly recommend reading the Cisco Live presentation first, and then watching the video. I put the link in the description. The first step is to settle the underling network, so I used OSPF protocol in the scenario. In our topology, R3 and R5 are XTR, and R6 is Map Server and Map Resolver. Let's jump to our underlay configuration. As you can see here, the OSPF is configured between R3, R4, R5, and R6, and we can verify them as OSPF neighbor. The loopback interface of Map Server and Resolver is reachable from R3, R4, and R5, but not from endpoints. The routing protocol between endpoints and Lisp routers is EIGRP. And finally endpoints cannot ping each other, and there is no reachability between them. Also they cannot ping Map Server and Map Resolver. The first step is to configure Map Server and Map Resolver. In our scenario, R6 handles both roles. In this step, we define the site. For easy understanding, I named both sites as R5 and R3. When we configure a site, we need to identify the endpoint prefix in each site. For security purpose, we can create an authentication key. This is recommended. Now we move to R3 and R5 and configure them as XTR, which is combination of ETR and ITR. After enabling Lisp protocol on the router, we need to define database mapping. This is map between local endgroup prefix and locator IP. I will point the locator in the map so you can have better understanding. Priority and weight config are related to one of the best and unique features of Lisp, which is ingress load balance, I will make a video about this feature. Now we make the router to act as ITR and ETR with these two simple commands. The combination of ITR and ETR is XTR. ITR will point to IP address of map resolver, ETR will register the EID into map server using authentication key. And finally we check the Lisp configuration under our XTR router. I have done the same configuration under R3. Let's check the Lisp section of its configuration. To verify the configuration, we go to our map server, map resolver, and see the registration EIDs. We can here verify the site names and the EID prefix and status of the locators. It's now time to check our Lisp scenario. Let's go to R1 and try to ping R2. But before ping, let me check the routing table for R2 loopback IP address. Because the routing table of R1 is empty, I need to create default root for it. I am doing this with IP summary command under gig02 of R3. Now, I have default root on R1 router, I will do the same configuration between R5 and R2. For better understanding about Lisp Tunnel, I will do the packet capture on my scenario, so we can check it out later. When we ping from R1, the first two packets will drop, this is where the IP resolution process is happening, and then we have the ping reply. Of course we can ping from R2 to R1 without any lost, because the map entry is done. Now we can download our packet capture. 
As you can see in the video, the first two packets lost was because her 3 had no idea about her 2 loopback. So our 3 is asking the map resolver about her 2 EID. Map resolver will response back with map reply message. Now our 3 has idea about her 5 as XTR and can establish an overlay tunnel. It's happened over UDP and port number 4341. From this moment the connection will establish and two EIDs can communicate with each other. And finally we have our last verification command. IP list map cache command. This is very useful command to verify the cached EID table on our Lisp routers. I hope you enjoyed the video. For more videos you can visit the channel and my website. Thank you for viewing.